We're here in Island Park. We're along the uh, west fork of the Des Moines River here in Wyndham and we did a dam removal and rock riffle installation project here in uh, 2011. In 2007, the uh, water of the Des Moines River decided to start going around our dam structure. We decided to engage uh, SCH to produce a feasibility study for us to examine a, a large number of options. Kind of where I'm standing now is where the water actually went around the dam. It actually breached the dam due to failure. There used to be a culvert structure and, and that failed and they had very soft soils between where I'm standing and the bank. And so when that gave out, the water literally was going around the dam and it actually would do kind of an S shape and was causing all kinds of erosion control problems on the other bank. And as we looked at this, really the city was initially split which way to go between whether they want the dam in or not. But in the end, the sediment load from the watershed was so high that the cost of sedimentation removal to keep a lake upstream really outweighed the need to put the dam back in. So we ended up really with this uh, rock riffle fish passage project. Part of the reason that we wanted to work with the city of Wyndham here was to come up with a solution that was affordable to the city but also met our needs statutorily. We look for this project to be an example. Uh, hoping that more projects come to the forefront um, so the DNR could partner with them from a regulatory authority and also from a grant funding authority um, through our fish passage money and our ecological resources money to try to make good projects happen. And, and I do believe there are many more out there, not just on the Des Moines River, but on some of our other rivers throughout the state of Minnesota. We purposely marked the end of the old dam here. And if you look out across the riffles, you can kind of see another gray stone there. That's the uh, other end of the dam. Another important parameter was public safety. The original dam was a low head dam and did exhibit a hydraulic roller. One of the things with that type of dam was it would actually create a roller effect. And these are very dangerous dams where basically you get in the water downstream of those dams, you get caught and it will literally suck you underwater and then you'll be underwater for a while and then it pops you back up but it doesn't kick you downstream, it literally recycles you right back to the dam, sucks you underwater, and it causes drowning. What you see here is a solution that helps distribute the flow over the riffle. You have a low point in the center, but it does concentrate all the flow toward the middle, but also keeps the vectors flowing downstream, so that if we do have anybody trapped in the flow, it will push them away from the riffles instead of trapping them here and getting stuck in that hydraulic roller. We really wanted to focus on, can we get a lot of the field stone, the round rocks, into this project, not only will it provide the engineering protection of the banks, but also aesthetically is much better. The challenge with using field stone is that there aren't a lot of stockpiles of it. But if you drive around this area in southern Minnesota, there's little stockpiles in every farm field. And they found out that once they talked to one farmer to get some rock, there's 10 others that said, hey, we got some field stone we'd like to get rid of. So it turned out they were able to get a really good price, basically say, we'll take your field stone out of the field if you let us haul it out. So we're looking at a wide variety of flows in this reach. So what we are very concerned about is as the flows change, our rocks would start to move, especially these boulders. You can't see it, but there's actually a road behind the top riffle. So a backhoe can actually come down the bank, drive around the back and fix anything. There's some boulders out in front. Actually, we purposely put those out there so if we get some ice impact during the spring melts, we're hoping that those that ice chunks will hit those boulders before it hits our dam projects and help break it up. One of the most important parameters of this project was improving the recreational opportunities. Um, number one was getting access down to the water without having any risks in terms of public safety, but at the same time allowing them to enjoy the wildlife enjoy the waterfall effect, but also at the same time do things like fishing, canoeing, kayaking. It's, it's just a great area for people to come and enjoy the river. We wanted to make sure we had the round rocks so that when the water does come up and maybe it's a couple feet higher than it is today, you can actually canoe through this area. And again, you're looking at round rocks on the bottom of the river. Part of the biggest parameter was fish passage. The original dam was a barrier to fish. Our solution looked to enable all species to be able to get upstream. We're in a low flow scenario right now, but even low, moderate, and high flows, the fish aren't able to swim upstream over the riffles. And even some of them stay within the riffles, depending on the energy. We wanted the rocks really tight. But again, with the input from the DNR and the field changes we made as far as the design, the spacing between the rocks is critical from a fish habitat because then the fish actually can migrate between the boulders. So it gives you not only the effect of protection and water elevation rays, 
but it allows that fish passage. We've opened up several hundred miles of river here with the City of Jackson project doing a similar riffle project. And now here in the City of Winning, opening up the entire river uh, for fish passage, for ecological diversity, and, and really a change in the, the health and the balance of the river. We're here uh, looking at the dam site, where the dam used to be anyway. This is in one of our major parks within the city of Wyndham. Here at Island Park, we have two baseball softball fields for the area youth and our recreation program. We have a very unique large baseball field complex. They host a lot of uh, tournament sectionals and things of that nature. Also in the park here, we have a campground that hosts 10 sites. We also have a very large uh, swimming pool added a few water park type features and that's been nice. As you can see the uh, project was uh, completed. We were within project budget and within time uh, constraints that we were trying to get the work done. We had about $300,000 from the Minnesota State Legislature and $100,000 from the uh, U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service and we were able to use a little bit of uh, city dollars for matching some of the engineering expenses in our first phase of the project. The construction and removal and the rock riffle installation pretty much covered with the uh, state and federal dollars we got. So that was very good news for the taxpayers of the city of Wyndham. Rocky Keehan spearheaded the project for us. He brought a lot of points of interest to us uh, so we could look at all different avenues of what this project could entail and he's been super uh, and uh, all the other SEH staff has been really great. Very, very happy with what SEH did for the city of Wyndham. Them.